And I have three citizens too. So. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you, Kevin. We Call this. Go ahead. Off. We have a couple different computers running here for the public to be able to talk. So. Thank you. We'll call this meeting to order May 19th, 2022 at 7.02 p.m. First thing to do is the Pledge of Allegiance. And Kevin, can you lead us in that? I pledge allegiance to the flag. United States of America, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. And then, Mayor, if I could, real quick. Yes. Uh, we'll be seeing 11.2 wildfire safety night. You said 11.2 fall safety or firewise safety. Yep, that's it. Okay. Yeah, the fire wildfire safety night, June 3rd. Wildfire. <laughs> All right. Jackie, can you take roll call? Councillor Sleda. Aye. Councillor Whitney. Aye. Councillor Coker. Here. Councillor Hooker. Uh, here. Mayor Hollett. Here. Councillor Kenyon. Here. Councillor Bjornsson. Councillor Bjornsson has an excused absence today. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. And is there any more additions, corrections, or adjustments to the agenda? Dawn, did your um, topic get added? If you're talking about the admin report, I think it's on here. The audit committee? Or uh, yeah, audit, that's what I meant. Okay, perfect. And- There uh, is- Go ahead, Councillor Spleedoff. There is one thing I'd like to add in here uh, is uh, for the library board, we need to do some changes on it. Changes to the resolution? No, to the um, our page on the website. Okay. Is that something that you can talk to Chief Martin about after the meeting? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Thank you. If you need to talk to me about it, I can help too. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Jackie, could you scroll down a little bit? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, public comment, if there's anyone there at the, um, at the City Hall workspace, let's go ahead and take comment there first. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, not this time. Okay. If there's anyone on the Zoom call, go ahead and raise your hand with the little icon that is under participants, or actually, I'm sorry, it's under um, reactions. You can raise your little emoji hand. And if you're unable to find that, you can just go ahead and unmute yourself and state your name and address. Okay, so no public comment. 
Mayor, comments, announcements, and proclamations. Um, I don't have any, um, actually I have one announcement and it is, <clears throat> if you recall the last meeting, I mentioned that we had a winner um, from the If I Were Mayor cons uh, contest. So the state of Oregon chose the, actually, I'm sorry, the Oregon Mayor's Association chose one of our students as a winner. Let me look up that name for you. Just so you guys know, there are um, all the schools, grade schools in all of Oregon submit um, posters, essays, all sorts of different things based upon their grade level. And we submitted um, participants from third, fourth, and fifth grade. Um, sorry, I'm looking for that email. All right, I'll um, bring it up at the end of the meeting. The email's not coming up for me. I'll announce the name of the kid. Other than that, I don't have any um, announcements or proclamations. On to council comments. Councilors, do you have any announcements? Um, I don't have any, oh, sorry. Dawn has her hand up, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I did it after you, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't have any announcements, but there is something that I wanted to bring up for a future discussion. Um, you know, we have a lot of fantastic volunteers throughout our, com our community that do things um, between committees and, you know, just like helping with parks, just a wide variety of things, you know, like the volunteers at um, the fire department. I think it would be great as um, we get closer to summer to maybe have some sort of um, like a barbecue or a get together just to honor all the volunteers in our community and maybe give them a little small um, awards or just something to recognize all the fantastic volunteers that we have in our community that do things for all of us to help make our city a great place to live. So I'd really like to talk about that a little bit at some point. Um, I did briefly talk about it with the mayor and we we discussed possibly buttoning it up to one of the concerts in the park um, events coming up and maybe renting um, the, the big building there at Green Waters to um, you know do something with concerts in the park at the same time just to just to honor and appreciate and acknowledge all of our volunteers. So, I think it's a great idea, Councillor Whitney. Um, is that something that you just want to put the seed in everybody's ear tonight and then talk about it at the next meeting? Or would you like to add it on the agenda for tonight? I would like to just put the seed out there um, and then, you know, come up with a agenda item later and really take a chance to look at and make sure that building's not being rented at one of those times that might look good for an event like that and um, really take some time to think about how it might look and and you know how we could come up with money for that or if we need to come up with money for that if we can find a way to do some sort of potluck event or something um, but yeah Council, is that something you'd like to touch bases with me and we can bring that yeah. back yeah that would be great either june 3rd or meeting. yeah absolutely um Definitely. I just, yeah. I just want to make sure we're acknowledging people because it's so vital what everybody does and everybody's commitments to the community is just wonderful. I love it. And that would be a barbecue for all volunteers of the city, no matter what committee or wherever they're helping out, correct? Exactly. And I, and it would be nice to make sure we extend an invitation to each person. Well, we could save this for a meeting I'm going into it a little more, but, you know, to really make sure we get people there and, um, you know, just really definitely acknowledge 
all the volunteerism we have in our community. Okay. Thank you. Great idea. Councillor Kenyon. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I had a couple of things I just wanted to throw out there for. Well, one thing for future discussion is um, in reviewing the minutes from that are in our packet tonight, um, I noticed that the, uh, the petition was presented to us a few months ago. And I know that we're delayed with our budget uh, season process to even start. So I was wanting to just kind of maybe add to an agenda for as soon as budget season is over to have council discussion item B, how to respond to the petition, maybe the first meeting in July. Okay, I added petition response for future meeting. And then the other thing that I wanted to bring up is in council comments at that same meeting, Am I doing feedback? Sorry. Um, it was brought up that our, our city website and YouTube channel are behind on having um, videos posted from our meetings. And I know it's been brought up a couple of times at least. And so I wanted to offer if it's necessary to come down to City Hall and sit and get those videos posted somehow. Is that, is that an option? Um, Chief, do you wanna answer that? Yeah, that's something we could talk about. Frankly, some of the meetings that other people have done them, so we don't have videos yet. And so I'm just kind of waiting on those. And then from the last meeting, we're just, that's my fault. I'm we're behind on that one. But a couple of meetings before that, we're like, are we missing videos? Um, a last one that I seen posted on the YouTube channel is from February. So are you saying that more have been added to the website, but they're just not on YouTube? I'll have to look, because I actually looked at YouTube today in the, Four seven meeting was the last one that I saw on there. So there was the first meeting in April was the last meeting that I know that was posted on on YouTube. Oh, okay, maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot. Okay, no, we'll check that, Councilor Tinian, because it's on the YouTube page. I didn't actually clarify if it's on the public part of it, but there is one that the last one that's on the YouTube page that I can log into is is from a four seven. Okay, I'll catch up with you later if I, after I look again. Sounds good. Um, just to make sure you guys are aware, a couple of the meetings um, were hosted from my personal computer. So I just talked to Chief Martin about this today and I might use the um, city's IT guy to help get that off there because it has to be, um, basically uploaded and then the executive session extracted from it so that it can be uploaded to the YouTube and um, also um, the YouTube account and the city's website. So that's my fault for those couple meetings. Okay. But we'll make sure that we make those a priority. Did you have anything else, Councillor Kenyon? Nope, that's all I had. Okay, Councillor Spleedoff? Yes, I wanted to uh, ask a question. I, before all this uh, stuff come up with the, our uh, pro tem city administrator, we had a, one of our ex councillors interested in property out at the OIP. And, Audie, and, Audie. Yes, yes. That's that's not public information. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Are there any other counselors that have uh, questions? 
Mayor? Yes. I wondered if we have any update on the status of the council chambers. Um, just a little bit. I need to meet with both um, Councillor Whitney and Councillor Coker. Unfortunately, all of our schedules have been super busy. We have purchased the TV. They're sitting in the council chambers. And with that, we purchased the mounts. Colleen um, got an estimate for the electrical um, cost to put in some extra outlets in that room from, I think it's Bear Mountain Electric. Um, so it's really, I, I'm not sure if Chief Martin, do you know if the camera, the, um, big one has been received yet? I know that it was ordered. Uh, Colleen's on here and I was going to that. I am not sure if we got the big camera or not yet. Okay. So some of the equipment has been purchased. Um, we really need to set aside a day where we can get some help to come in there and come paint and start moving furniture around and just kind of doing the grunt work and the stuff that needs to happen. And the committee needs to get together and make a couple decisions too before we can move forward. Okay. Anything else? Okay, consent agenda. Make a motion we approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Motion made by Councillor Whitney and seconded by Councillor Kenyon. Jackie, will you call for the vote? Yep, hold on. Councillor Bjornsson. Oh, sorry. Mayor Hollett. Aye. Councillor Whitney. Aye. Councillor Kenyon. Aye. Councillor Coker. Aye. Councillor Hooker. Aye. Councillor Spleedoff. Aye. Thank you. On to appointments. Chief Martin, I'll let you introduce these two. And Jackie, can you scroll down to Robert Woodson and then Lisa Samuelson? Yeah. Yes. Um, were you wanting to be looking at the applications from the? Yes. Oh, okay. Was was I on mute when I said that? No. Oh. So we request a motion from the, the council to uh, staff is requesting the approval of Robert Woodson to the library board committee. And his application is there before you. I'm did you have any, if you have any questions for him, I was going to give him the laptop of using and you guys can ask him any questions you feel. Thank you. I move to accept the volunteer nomination of Robert Woodson for the library board for a term that would end in December 31st of 2025. I'll second. Motion made by Councillor Kenyon and seconded by Councillor Whitney. Any discussion or questions? I have a question for Robert if he's available. Hi, Robert. 
Robert, thanks for coming tonight. You're welcome. Um, I'm just curious uh, what interests you into being a part of the library board and just a little bit how long you've been in the community. Uh, I'm probably there three times a week. It's, uh, I think, the, uh, the finest uh, uh, organization in the city. Uh, extremely well run. Um, I believe currently there's at least 18 volunteers that keep everything moving. Extremely well organized. Uh, my mother was a school teacher and my sister was a librarian, so I'm familiar with the uh, activities. Uh, so I would like to I'd like to help in whatever way I can. And uh, Georgie said there was an opening on the board and suggested that I do that. Thank you. Can everybody be able to speak, please? Oh, I bet that's Kevin's, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I look for the tracks too. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so um, I see that Robert lives in West Fur. So I, I think I remember they were just reading this a few minutes ago that the library um, has positions that can be outside of the city. Is that correct, Councillor Kenyon? Yes, that is correct. I read the resolution tonight, and there are uh, a total of six members, four of which have to be from Oak Ridge. And the other two seats are available to West Fern residents. Well, actually, to the zip code 97, what is it? Whatever the West Fern zip code is. Would you have to know right now how many people that we have that are out of city limits? I know the names of all the members that are on the committee but I do not know where they live. I'm able to find their applications. I just looked up the appointments that we made on in our minutes online. So we have a Julia Oder, Jessica Atkins, Jeannie Cabello, Terry Deloach, and Annie Brown. Does anyone know if those are all Oak Ridge residents? I, I, can don't. I can verify three of them are. The city recorder believes they are. Okay. okay perfect. I'm satisfied with that. I just wanted to double check that piece and make sure we were within our parameters. Thanks for catching that, Councilor Whitney. And uh, Council, I'll, I'll confirm that tomorrow, just to make sure. Thank you. I can assure you that I'm not moving out of Westford. <laughs> Yeah, and to verify the other zip code is 97492. Yes. I don't have any other questions. Can I take this? Oh, I think you're muted. I'm sorry you cut out. What was that, Council Kenyon? I wondered if I could have the floor for a second. Yes, sorry, I thought I asked you. Um, I wanted to say thank you for applying, Robert. I'm looking forward to um, having that library committee full again. And I'm sure you'll be an excellent asset to the team. Thank you, Don. 
go ahead, Councillor Salido. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, glad to see you getting an interest into our library here, and I'm soon going to be back capable of going to the meetings and stuff. I've had a little medical issues, and we need to fill that other position, get us all up and going good. So thank you for applying. You're welcome. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. All right, Jackie, can we call for the vote? Mayor Hallett. Aye. Councillor Whitney. Aye. Councillor Hooker. Aye. Councillor Kenyon. Aye. Councillor Sleeto. Aye. Councillor Coker. Aye. Mayor and Councilor, and we have a 9.2. It's a Lisa, Lisa Samuelson to the Budget Committee and uh, request for Council Action. Kevin, didn't we have two appointments? Yeah, are you, are you not hearing? Is my, am I not coming through? Can you guys hear me? I yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, it's 9.2. Lisa Samuelson to the Budget Committee. And it's a request for Council Action for a motion to approve or deny her application. Uh, staff recommends approval. And there is the council motion of Jackie, if you could scroll down some to the application. And Lisa is here if there's any questions. I have a motion from the floor. I move to accept the volunteer nomination of Lisa Samuelson as presented for a term that would end December 31st of 2024. All second. Uh, motion made by Councillor Kenyon and seconded by Councillor Coker. Go ahead with discussion. Go ahead, Councillor Sheetoff. Yes, uh, just a second, wait till I guess you move the computer. Every time it does it, it goes in. Hello, what kind of uh, experience do you have? Well, um, we just got done with the budget for the school, um, for the school and I was on that committee. It was very simple. <laughs> but I am a taxpayer and I'm interested in where my money goes. Okay. So you willing to work long hours and hard work? Sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Go ahead, Councilor Whitney. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my question is, I was looking at the application and in the section where it says, if applying for a border committee, please tell us why you were interested in serving. And I didn't see anything there. So I was just wondering if you can answer as to why you're interested in serving on this committee. Well, I heard that there was, um, that you needed more people on the committee and after trying to find people for the committee, for the school board, I, I felt that um, it was so hard to find someone to fill the positions there. I thought that maybe I could help here. And I just didn't want to see a, a space not filled.
Thank you. Questions for Lisa? The only thing I have is Lisa, thank you for applying. That's a lot of work to be on the school budget uh, committee and then to jump right into another one. So thank you very much for volunteering your time. Jackie, can we call for the vote? Did you have a question? I just wanted to reiterate your sentiments as well. Thank you, Lisa, for applying and being willing. Okay, go ahead, Jackie. Councillor Sleedoff? Aye. Councillor Coker? Aye. Councillor Hooker? Aye. Councillor Kenyon? Aye. Councillor Whitney? Aye. Mayor Hollett? Aye. What did you say? Aye. Thank you. Motion passed. Thank you very much, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'll let Kenyon go ahead and lead this part and report on our audit committee. Um, sure. So our, our audit committee met to discuss the need to appoint a new citizen budget committee member to this committee at our first meeting of the budget committee next week. And we also held a meeting with our auditor, Brad Tirano to receive an update on the status of our fiscal year 2021 audit, which has not been filed with the state of Oregon to date. We learned that the largest reason for the delay in filing was poor response times in communication and information being shared from the finance director and city administrator administration last fall. Our auditors are currently still waiting to receive back a couple pieces of information from our new finance director before they can file the package with the state of Oregon. It's anticipated that the audit will be filled with or filed with the state by the end of 20, uh, June 2022. All the proper extensions have been filed and there's no financial penalty, penalty anticipated. Uh, Brad assured us that last year's audit was started near the end of 2021 and or June of 2021, and they will do so again this year. We requested that Brad schedule a time slot to meet with the audit committee in October of 2022 to update us on the status. And we were all in consensus that we would like to see this year's audit filed on time in December 2022. So our next steps are after the appointment of the new citizen budget member, we'll schedule a meeting to take place in July to review the resolution for this committee and set up our timeline for meetings between October and December of 2022. And Councillor Kenyon will check in with the auditors in early June to find out the status of the current audit and see if they are still on schedule to file by the end of June respectfully submitted by Councillor Kenyon. <coughs> Councillors, do you have any questions for Councillor Kenyon? So Don, I just wanted to let you know that I reached out to our auditor today and let him know that it will be a priority of mine to get him everything uh, next week to finish up on our end. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome.
And that's all I had, Mayor. And then can you put that on the agenda that we advertise for a citizen budget committee member? And just to, so that everybody remembers, that needs to be a citizen that is currently on the budget committee that will serve on the audit committee. Go ahead, Councillor Sleal. Uh, I just wanted to find out how do we keep this from repeating itself? Is there anything that council should do? Um, thank you, Adi. I actually briefly discussed that with the auditors and uh, Mayor Hollett was present as well. We realized that um, the audit committee is very important part of the process. And last year, the audit committee didn't meet so that could be where it fell through the cracks because uh, the council being the audit committee wasn't made aware that the city wasn't coordinating well with the auditors. And they assured us that as long as that's happening and the audit committee is involved to oversee, then uh, we shouldn't have those delays moving forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you for reporting on that, Councilor Kenyon. Uh -huh. All right, next item on the agenda. And Mayor, did you want me to go over this or do you want to go over this? Go ahead, I'll, I'll speak up when I need to. All right, this is a business from the city council. This is the <clears throat> intergovernmental agreement with Lane Council of Governments. Uh, the background is uh, IGA between the city of Oak Ridge and the Lane Council of Governments to provide financial and budget assistance to the city of Oak Ridge, providing fiscal controls, oversight and process support to the city staff. The staff recommends the acceptance of the motion of the council and the motion is before you. And if Jackie could scroll down, if you have questions, there is a copy in your packet of the IGA with LCOG for those services. Give a little background uh, for citizens. Um, we reached out to LCOG and asked them to come in and provide us some budgetary assistance. We, with the um, interim person that we had, we just found a lot of really errors in the budget that we felt we really needed some expertise to come in and help us and um, Colleen and Kevin have been working their tails off on this and this little piece to the puzzle is going to just give them that expertise to kind of look at the work and make sure that we're really um, crossing our T's and dotting our I's. And uh just a bit of information, uh, she will be with us tomorrow morning, the first first morning, and Colleen and I will be working with her. We've, she's worked with the city before from Elcog in, in the past, so she has some Oak Ridge history as well. I move to accept the IGA and permit the mayor to sign the agreement with Elcog as presented. I'll second that. Made from Councillor Kenyon and seconded by Councillor Hooker. Is there any more discussion? Jackie, will you call for the Hold on, I have a. Go ahead. Audie, you can take Audie's first. I was trying to get my hand up. And... Go ahead, Audie. Okay, I was wondering do we have a approximate cost? I, I seen in there how much it is an hour. But do we know approximately how much? Is there any way to tell that or not? Uh, I can't speak to that. She's going to help us uh, tomorrow, Friday, and then we believe on Monday. And then she would be available through Zoom if council has questions as we go through the budget process. So it could be tied to, so for hours tomorrow and Monday, and then uh, 
for working hours of those two days and then as needed for budget meetings. Okay, thank you. Oh, and another thing, can we afford it? Or can we afford not to? That would have been uh, my, my question. Frankly, Colleen and I need to help because there's parts of the budget that neither one of us are up to speed on and, and we need to help. It's it's To me, it's a thing we have to do. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Whitney. Um, yeah, so will Kena be coming to Oak Ridge to do this or will you guys be able to do this by um, through like Teams or Zoom or some other format? And I believe she's tomorrow morning to meet with uh, Colleen and I, and then uh, part of it will probably be through Zoom going into the future, but we're hoping to to meet in person with her tomorrow and Monday. Okay. And so do we know if this contract will cover her gas expenses or, or will we be paying that as well? No, I confirmed that with LCOG, but if there is travel miles, we pay the government rate on that, and that's what we've done prior. I'm sorry, but can you say that again? I confirmed with Brenda Wilson that we will be paying the government mileage rate, but most likely 90% of this will be done remotely. Okay. Yeah, I was just concerned because I know that the travel time will be paying the hourly rate and then the mileage, so you know it can add up really quickly if we have a lot of days like that i don't i don't anticipate the travel being more than tomorrow and monday and then if we need her on tuesday through zoom and then uh of course meetings if if the council would like or the budget committee would like to speak to her during meetings to clarify anything that would also be through zoom Go ahead, Councilor Kenyon. Um, a couple of things. I would want to ask for it to be clarified if we'll be paying an hourly rate during their travel. I'm okay if we have to, but that doesn't sound right to me. I think just being reimbursed for mileage is pretty standard, but I could be wrong. Um, uh, Don, I can probably answer that. Typically, professional services, we would have to pay for the travel as well. Pay for the time as well? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, and then, aside from that, I just wanted to comment that I think it's absolutely necessary. And uh, in my opinion, take as much time as you need to get what you need so that we have a <laughs> budget presented to us. Do I agree, Don? Go ahead, Councillor Sweetall. Yeah, I agree with Don is to take as much time as needed to make sure that we get a good budget uh, to us and where we can really work with it. Now, let me confirm her time does start when she leaves uh, Eugene or wherever she lives and ends in when she gets back or ends when she stops here at Oak Ridge. I'll confirm that, but most likely when people do professional services, it's it's from door to door. Door to door. Okay, thank you. Or work site to work site. So. so she is held up by a traffic, something traffic. We're paying for a time set in the traffic too? I believe so, sir. Because some of that can really add up on 58. If you could check that out for us, I'd please, I would appreciate that, Kevin. Okay, I'm done. Jackie, will you call for the vote? <sighs> Councillor Hooker? Aye. Councillor Whitney? Aye. 
Councillor Kenyon? Aye. Councillor Coker? Aye. Councillor Splita? Aye. Mayor Hollett? Aye. Surplus. Mayor, we can barely hear you. Everybody else comes real loud. I know, I'm trying to speak louder. Did you guys hear that I said surplus? 11.1, thank you. Okay, Mayor, Mayor and Council. Uh, Business from the city administrator, 11.1 uh, .1 is the Oak Ridge Fire Department is requesting a surplus vehicle and we're requesting an action from the council and the motions before you, as well as the information sheet that came from Captain Hollett. Uh, hopefully everybody got to look at that. The subject is uh, Oak Ridge Fire Department is requesting to surplus a vehicle. It is a 1996 international diesel ambulance uh, Captain Hollett has the requested amendment attached to this council action. Uh, staff recommends the acceptance by the council for a motion to approve it. Um, I move to accept the OFD request to surplus the 1996 International Ambulance through sealed bid process and proceeds to be returned to the OFD budget as presented. I'll second that. Discussion, uh, motion made by Councilor Whitney and seconded by Councilor Coker. Go ahead, Councilor Sleetoff. Uh, yes, I'd like to find out why it's a sealed bid only, uh, as all the rest of sales have been open to the internet. Uh, we've we've done we've done bids both ways through a, a third party company, and then uh, we're not going to go to the third party company this time. So typically speaking, those are those are sealed bids, and we have done that in the past. And how do they? get a sealed bid for this all sealed bid means is that they don't open the bids until whenever the deadline is okay so where would they get the bid to bid for it that will be on all the announcements okay thank you and we'll be advertising that as well as the fire department so and then the Fire department will take those bids and bring them to City Hall. Go ahead, Councillor Kenyon. So, is that like a public auction or uh, or through the internet? It's like any. It would be posted on probably the city's website and Facebook, and anybody can make bids on it. Okay. Public, okay. government, anyone. Yeah, Councillor Kenyon. So we'll we'll most likely post it on the city stuff and the three Facebook pages, and then people will basically put their bid in the envelope and bring it in. And so it's not actually like open bidding against each other. It's a sealed bid. So okay. the fire department will go through it and then take their highest bid. Perfect. All right, Jackie, will you call for the vote? Councillor Sleetoff? Aye. Councillor Kenyon? Aye. Councillor Coker? Aye. Councillor Whitney? Aye. Councillor Hooker? Aye. Mayor Hollett? Aye. This, this one's a little uh, uh, Was my name called for that vote? No. Here's the second one. 
She said you were a second one. Okay. We didn't hear. And then we will, 11.2 is wildfire safety night uh, request for fee exemption. And that is actually at the very back of your packets. So, Jack, you'll scroll through here, the financial report. And, we'll get to that. and I believe somebody is online from them if there's questions. And I believe it's, uh, I just scrolled past some Dustin. Yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah. Uh, so, Mayor and Council, this is a request from the for Wildfire Safety Night Park Use Fee Waiver. The background is the Southern Limit Forest Collaborative and the Oak Ridge Area requesting a fee waiver for use of Greenwater's Park Community Building Amphitheater and Overflow for Wildfire Safety Night community event that is scheduled for June 3rd. Uh, staff recommends acceptance by motion of the Council. Uh, the financial impact is approximately $340 in lost rent revenue. And there's an attached couple attachments there, event permits and a brochure from from the event. And Dustin is on here if there's questions. Don, did you have a question? Go ahead, Councilor Kenyon. Um, actually, as a sidebar, I wanted to make a request that when we're turning the lap off at City Hall for the vote, could could we lift it and turn it rather than sliding it on the table because it's very loud. Okay, yep. And um, as far as the waiver goes, I don't really have any questions um, other than why is it coming to us so late when the uh the event is very soon it says on the application that it's supposed to be submitted i think 45 days in advance of the coming council something like that yeah sure um we've had a lot of projects going on lately um we were doing a lot of planning for the tree planting festival so it's all excuses but it's mostly just because we didn't have the list of vendors down and we didn't know the exact time we had it uh, listed for later but it turned out that uh, forest service and oregon department of forestry and some other fire officials couldn't attend except for on june 3rd so we had to push it back a couple of weeks and that's that's the main reason that it's coming so late to you so apologies about that okay thank you thanks I don't have a lot of questions other than I really appreciate you guys putting on this event. I attended the event last year. I thought it was a really great part of wildlife safe, excuse me, wildfire safety for Oak Ridge, especially because it kind of kicked off the summer and then we had the big twist fire. So um, I really appreciate you guys' police work and I will definitely be there. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, and we'll definitely be talking about what some of the people learned from the Chris fire and, you know, how we can go forward this year. So I'm excited for it. I think a lot of people are far as and uh, we'll have some good food there, too. So hopefully we can all see you June 3rd at uh, 6 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, Jackie, can you call for the vote? Oh, thank you. Was there a motion yet? We're wondering, we don't think there was a motion. I was motion. just wondering that myself, because I think we went right into discussion. Um, Sorry, I thought there was a motion and it was seconded by Councillor Coker. No? I don't think so. I think no, there was, wasn't. That, that was the previous one, Mayor. Okay. I'll make a motion. I move to accept the fee waiver um, to Southern Willamette Forest Collaborative and Oak Ridge Air for Wildfire Safety Night as presented. I'll second. I'll second. Made by Councillor Whitney and seconded by Councillor Sleetoff. Do we have any more discussion? Jackie, can you call for the vote?
Councillor Hooker. Aye. Councillor Whitney. Aye. Councillor Kenyon. Aye. Mayor Hollett. Aye. Councillor Coker. Aye. Councillor Sleetoff. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. And thank you for doing this, Dustin. Thank all you guys. Councillor Mayor, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Dustin, for coming tonight and answering questions. All right. What do we have for report of staff? Uh, I have a library report, and I looks like I left it in my office. So I'll be right back. And I don't see any of the fire people on tonight. I know Captain Hollett was under the weather, and Captain Higdon has been busy. So. Uh, Mayor Council, uh, I've spoken to Georgie quite a bit lately. She's been working on input for her budget as well. And uh, the library's uh, been plugging along. Lots of people go over there. Uh, one thing that she wanted to note that was actually really interesting to me as well is they did an Oregon section. So they, they made a section in the library just for books that are about Oregon. Uh, so like nonfiction books about Oregon. And then Oregon authors, so there's a whole section kind of in the, I guess it'd be the south wall of the library. So if any citizens are interested to go check that out, it's in the south wall of the library. And as far as other reports, I know Robert had a report. Uh, I can send that out to the council and we'll, or kick it to the next meeting. And I'll have to apologize to the police department report. I've been doing city administrator stuff and completely forgot about the police department report so i can either bring that to the next meeting or do it do double in june wait for what works for you okay and then uh we have the financial uh, attached to the packet there hopefully everybody got a chance to look at it and colleen is online if there are any questions Mayor? Go ahead, Councilor Sleetoff. I had something to add to the report for library. Uh, their book collection uh, box has been installed down on uh, Highway 58. It's between uh, Cowgirl Cooking and the Postal Pharmacy. It'll be picked up three times a week. And uh, They'll pick up their, their books out of that so the people don't have to go to the library to drop their books off. And I guess there was a, a bench installed on the back deck at the uh, library. Memorandum to Susan Valerie Vincent. And they dedicated it on the 14th at noon. 
and they they were planning on having a book sale down there during the tree planting parade, but for some reason there wasn't any books to sell, and it they said it was raining and pretty bad weather out there anyway, so they canceled that one. And they would like to see about getting a fax machine uh, and stuff down there. Georgie was going to talk to Travis about a fax line. Their next meeting is supposed to be the 10th of July at 4 p.m. So just some information on that too, to add to Kevin's report. Cool. Are there any questions on the financial report here for Pauline? Mayor Holland. Uh, go ahead, Councilor Hooker. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have a question of something on the uh, fee waivers, and I'm not sure if now would be okay to bring it up. Sure, go ahead. Just wondering, I know at one time we had all discussed what was going on, but I don't remember, do we repay fee waivers out of the RTMP? That is an excellent question. We, if I, if memory serves me right, we should actually be designating where we pay for those uh, fee waivers out. I think Councillor Kenyon has talked about that quite a few times. So I think that's probably a good idea for us to follow that up with a motion on where we would like uh, the finance director to take that back. Councillor Kenyon, do you agree with that? Um, actually, my suggestion was going to be uh, that we need to have, we need to actually have an agenda item to discuss fee waivers so that we can set a policy so that it can always be uh, you know, done the same way. We've had issues a few different times over fee waivers in the last couple of years. And I really think we should get it pounded out. As far as should it come out of RTMP or TRT, I think that those funds are specifically supposed to be used for events that create tourism or overnight room stays. And I'm not sure if this event would qualify for that. So I th think we would just have to take the hit. Yeah, I, I agree with Councillor Kenyon. I don't believe that we can, I know we can't take it out of RTMP. I'm not sure about TRT. So that might do, but, but my first remembrance is that this event wouldn't qualify. And I also agree with Councilor Kenyon to, for council to set a policy because this has been gone back and forth a few times on, on stuff. Yeah, this was actually one of the projects I was working on with Kevin Cronin, um, but we just hadn't made it very far on it. I'll put that on a future agenda. Thanks for bringing it up, Councillor Hooker. Thank you. All right, questions on the financial report? Councillor Kenyon, did you have something? I do. I have a couple of things. Let me see if I can find my... notes. Um, one thing I wanted to ask for... Um, Colleen, is uh, if you can scroll Jackie to the top of this report where the first line item is right there. Um, I've noticed the beginning fund balance for every fund throughout this report in the year to date actual column has a, a zero. And I do know that in the past, um, probably 
let's see, we're in 2022. So probably through maybe February of 2021, or even a little later, we, there was always a number there. And it was based off of whatever the, you know, end of year finances were from the from the previous year. Uh, can you find out for us why that number is now a zero? And if it's possible to adjust that, could you? So are you specifically only asking about the the first revenue account or are you talking about all oh. anything that has a zero in it? No, not anything with a zero, but uh, specifically beginning fund balance number for every fund. You're talking about here today, actual? Yeah. Okay. Uh, usually that number stays the same throughout the year. It's just that it gets inputted probably in, in July or August, whenever you're done. The pre right. Anything in here as far as the budget stuff would have been done last year for July of one. Yeah. Um, but I can look at that beginning revenue account to see okay. what is a zero in the year today. Okay, and then also we used to get another statement of revenue and expenditure report that showed a summary per fund, like it said, um, for example, the library and the police you know, every single fund, what the ex, uh, revenue and expenses and the amount over expenses, you know, like a summary. So it would be this report, but it was summarized by account, correct? Yes. Um, so, Jackie, can you go down a little bit and see, okay, pull some, go down to expenses. A little bit. I think, I think right there. A little bit more, would you? So, yeah, keep going. I want to see if it if it's totaling by. Um, okay. the, uh, okay. So it must be the way I pulled the report. So I will make sure that I get it to summarize per account um, on the next. Uh, financial report. So, so how to clarify, this this one just does it by fund. So you want it broken down to the specific departments because the general fund has quite a few. Is that what you are looking for, Don? Okay. So, um, you know what I'll do? I will send you, Colleen, an example of the report that we used to get. In addition to this, I don't want this one to stop. The other one is an additional one. Okay, got it. Yeah, if you could send me that, I'll be glad to do it. Okay, thank you. Oh, and then um, for Kevin, I wondered if you could get us an update on the um, on the library right now. It appears to be uh, a lot of overspending on the, in the library department. I wondered if you could find out why so she did she, georgie did talk to me about that and there was a couple lines that uh and i'm not sure if it was council or budget committee cut last year but they couldn't actually cut because they were grants so she spent the amount that the grant that the grant allowed so there was a there was a couple lines the summer reading program i believe was one and i think there was something with donations and I think one other grant, but she spent the grant a lot, a lot of money. And it, it, I'm calling them grants, but I think it's money that she gets every year for the library. Just for instance, I believe the, for whatever reason, the summer reading program was cut by five, cut to $500, but she legally had to spend a thousand because that's how much she was given for that program. If that makes sense, that money could not be used for anything else except for the summer reading program. 
and for some reason it was 500 and the, she actually just told me that this morning so and i can clarify on the other ones okay thank you thank you go ahead counselor Sleetoff. yeah uh, could you go uh, back up please Okay. Uh, I see we're back here in computer equipment, supplies and support. We're over by 206%. Uh, and we got a lot of overtures. Um. Just to interject really quick here, based on the um, the general fund account number, that is the administration department's line. General oh, ledger, I, I said general fund, I'm sorry. General ledger, okay. So um, I would have to pull up that uh, GL account and see what's exactly in there and why, because, you know, I haven't been here long enough to know. Uh, but the other thing that is, is quite a bit over is the building maintenance. And that's because our building has no, like, it needs way more maintenance than what we're doing to it. So that's just what happens. I mean, we've had plumbing problems. We've had other issues just from when I've been here in the last few months. So that's something that cannot be, you know, there's not much we can do about it. It just hasn't been kept up on. I can testify to that because it, it, uh, the police department has been flooded from upstairs twice. Yep. In the, so that was non-anticipated stuff that just had to get fixed. Councilor Sleetoff, did you have anything else? Yeah, further in the report, there was some ridiculous amount. I don't, I can't get mine back up to find out, but it's like some big long number that we were over in percentage down further in the report. I did see one for 608%. Is that the one you're thinking of? It might have been. Keep keep on going. Uh, it was page three, the six hundred and eight percent. It's materials and supplies in the library. That's the one I was asking about. Oh, okay. And then just above it, there's uh, in uh, the tower, the. Um, Telephone computer tower up. Can you go back up? Page three. Page three. Okay. It was like go down a little bit. It's six lines. There you go. Bottom. Dead Mountain Tower lease it says we're two hundred and two hundred six dollars. 30 cent percent over. I will check on that. It appears to me that all was taken out of the police department when that's technically supposed to be taken out of each department for the $900. I believe that's how the previous finance director worked that out. But if, as I remember the amount, and it appears the full amount is, has come out of the police department budget. And, and uh, Colleen is able to check the GL codes on that to see where the money went so we can get back to you on that. Yeah, okay. I can, if I need to just look at how it's been done and it's not been done correctly, we can fix that. Okay, and then if you go on down quite a bit, there's more. It's uh, another way on down. Uh, well, there's a one right there in uh, 524, 71%. And that's, uh, 
Is that okay? That's building maintenance. Okay. Then the next one is uh, seasonal work temp. No, that's telephone. Okay. We're 242.20% over. Is is that something to do with the tower too or what? That one is specific to the WAC based on the ledger number 18. Okay. I wondered about that myself. Why? Well, I can tell you that the phone bills there are nowhere near $23. So, <laughs> I mean, landlines are very expensive right now and that just doesn't seem like something was entered correctly from the beginning. You mean okay, the it, amount or? Yeah, that $22, $22.92, I believe that's the beginning uh, budget line. Right. So that's, that's definitely an error there. So that would be why. And is that part of the Wi-Fi system over there, or, or I didn't know we had any telephones over there. Yeah, we have several several telephone lines out there. So, is there something we can do there, or? I need to see oh. uh, sorry, I want to interject that first column is actually how much we had spent. Oh, this is different. Current budget. Oh, this report is different. I'm used to having that first column be what we had spent by this time last year for the same mm. line. Yeah. And see down at the bottom where it says general fund ex excess of revenue expenditures, it's got some astronomical amount that we're over. That's a percentage. Yeah. But that's a big number of percentage that we're over. Well, it does look like the grand total says one cent in the annual budget. So when you spend 954000 and you only have budgeted one cent, you're way over budget. <laughs> it's not the right numbers are entered in there. Yeah, so I guess we need to work on that whole budget thing because we got a lot of overage that doesn't make sense. All right, well, I'm sure Colleen's gonna put a pin in it so um, we can maybe look at that next time. Yeah, sure. It's hard for me to look at this like on the computer screen, like here, so <laughs> sorry. Okay, thank you. Any more financial questions? Mayor Hall, I'd... go ahead. I just wanna say thank you to Colleen for all she's doing and what she's having to do and to um, Kevin for what he has taken the responsibility to do. I thank you both. I'd like to second that too. 
thank you. Thank you both for coming in and trying to fix this mess that we're in. Thank you. We'll get through. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it as well. Thank you so much, both of you. Yes, it's a big job ahead of you. And probably if you would have known this in advance, Colleen, you may not have wanted in. <laughs> right? <laughs> you didn't warn me, Ani. <laughs> And uh, I want to say thank you for saying that, counselors. I, we appreciate it. Really uh, and just to note, we froze up part of the time when you were talking about the financial stuff. One note I wanted to make is there's several of them we're going to have to go through the GL codes and and look because uh, I can know in my budget there was a couple stuff, things that were coded in the wrong one. So we will go through and check the ones that are real far over and uh, make sure they're being coded right and and if they're not to get those fixed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for answering all that too, Colleen. All right, uh, if there isn't anything else on the financial reports, um, I think that's about the end of the meeting unless you had anything else, Kevin. Uh, I just had one thing that I wanted to give you guys. It was a question asked with uh, the bids for the well number two, the two appendix, the two options. And I talked to the city engineer about that and they won't know for sure what to do with those until they open it up and look at everything. Uh, he did say most likely the seal one that I believe it's a clay seal that will most likely have to be replaced, but that will come back to council at that time. And then also, I believe it was the pump part that was rebuilt some time back. So it's fairly new, but they won't know until they open it up if they have to replace that. So if those two things have to get, most likely the one will, but the other, if it does, both those things will come back to council at that time. I know that I believe there was two counselors that asked questions about that, that I didn't have answers for at the time. Good, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And then one other thing I had for council is uh, just because, frankly, I've been pretty busy with doing, wearing all the hats. If there's something in past meetings before I came in as pro tem that you had asked for, I've been trying to skim some of those meetings to see. And I, I if there was something you asked for in the past few months, that you need to come up again in case I missed it. Can you please give me an email or call me and let me know so we don't let everything slip by? Because if because uh, I I I don't remember all of it from just sitting in there as police chief. So when there was a meeting I missed because I was at training. So if there's anything that needs to come back up from those previous meetings, uh, back back to probably February when Brian left. Just can you let me know? And even if there's anything else that I don't might have missed on my radar, if you guys could just either call or email me and say, hey, we talked about this on such and such, and that was supposed to be brought back up. So I don't want to miss any of those. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry, I actually, um, you saying that, thank you, Kevin, reminded me that I came across something today and made a note to, to look into it in the future. Um, last year, a contract was brought to us to um, that we have with ODOT for the, uh, what do you call that thing, the rest area. <laughs> And I saw in the minutes that we somehow get reimbursed for, like we supply them with a list of all the expenses we had to manage the park every year. That, you know, that we're doing the work and buying the supplies. And so we submit a list to get reimbursed and I noticed that we didn't have any revenues on that wherever it is in the financial report. So I wondered if that's something that you guys might not be aware of. I remotely remember something about that, Councilor Kenyon, and we can do some research and try to figure that out. All right. I know that Franny's the person to speak to about that. Excellent. 
All right, I did want to have that go back to the if I were mayor um, contest and that um, winner was Daytona Ramirez and his family has been notified and we're going to do something with the school coming up probably um, in a couple weeks and that's kind of when it fits in on the school's time. So if there are any counselors that would like to come and attend that assembly with me, that would be awesome. I'm super excited that we have an Oak Ridge kid that received an award and I believe it's a hundred dollar gift as well. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I'd, I'd like to do it. I would too. Okay. Yeah, let me know, <laughs> Mayor Hollett. I'd like to be there. I'll send it out to you guys. Um, Same here. <laughs> There are also, I went through, gosh, there was probably a hundred um, submissions and I went through them and chose three for each class. And so I was hoping that we could actually do kind of a city of Oak Ridge award to the kids. And if counselors and staff um, would like to be involved in that, that would be really cool too. There, our kids put in some really awesome stuff. So I'll email you guys when I know when that exact date is. Tina was looking at it and she's not exactly sure yet. But that is all I had. Is there any other kind of uh, counselor comments? Anything else? Uh, there was one thing. I'm trying to find it here. Uh, I guess they're closing the high school library. It's from the notes that uh, I got from the meeting. So we're going to be the only library out there, I guess. Um, is that verified information or should we look into that? I'm going to look into it a little more uh, because that was that was just what was posted out here on it. Uh, I'm reading in here, trying to find out exactly where it said it. Okay, are there any other comments? Um, I'll, I'll I'll look into that further. Okay. Uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Chief, do you have any uh, public there that wishes to speak? I, we have about? one. We have one public member here. I'll just ask do you. Do you have any public comment? No. He says he does not at this time. Okay, thank you. And if you're in the public on the Zoom, raise your hand and I will call on you in order. If you're not able to raise your hand, just go ahead and unmute yourself. First one up would be Rusty. Go ahead and state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Rusty Ackland, 48265 Commercial Street here in Oak Ridge. And I just I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what uh, Councillor Whitney talked about for your volunteer recognition, which I think is a great idea. But I would just like to ask you to remember if you're going to tag it on to a concert in the park and do a barbecue with free food, to remember that the vendors that come to the park with food, that's they're making money off of what people buy and that could impact the sales for the the concert itself because we have a lot of volunteers and if they come and they bring their families for the free food it's it could take away from the vendors at the park that day so just something to think about when you're looking at dates to do that thank you thank you rusty excellent point Go ahead, Trudy Hammond. Hi, Trudy Hammond at 76349 Willamette Way. And um, <clears throat> that's a good point, Rusty. And, and I was thinking the free food that would be offered normally by the city, maybe they could just print out $1 coupons for the businesses that will be there um, vending for uh, customers. So um, that's food for thought. The second part is um, I was wondering, um, I got, I came in late, I had a successful adoption. And I was wondering about the question I asked last meeting um, with the OIP and the property that was purchased and why is there no activity with the purchase of that property? 
um, I think it was a trailer company and there's supposed to be jobs and stuff available. I was wondering if there was an answer for that yet. I can answer just a little bit about that, Trudy. I know that they have put a fence around the property and I think they're working on a small temporary building. Um, I know the city, I know that Brian tried working with them many, many times. Our um, pro tem in the meantime, tried working with them. And I'm not sure if Kevin has had a chance to meet with them, but I can say that the city side has attempted multiple times to help them. And I think um, there's only so many things that the city can do. So I think the balls in their court is I guess what I'm, I'm getting at. I don't think the city is hindering anything. So. Um, but I knew Chief probably has a little bit of news to report. Yeah, um, I could just give a quick answer as much as I can. There is a planning process going into effect right now that I've actually been uh, working with uh, Texas Pride and uh, our planning, our contract planners. So there is movement there. Uh, it's a process I don't understand because I'm not a planner. So we've asked for help from our LCOG planners and our normal planners. and. Uh, we've had some emails back and forth. Cool, thank you. Thank you, Trudy. Uh -huh. um, Rusty, is that a new hand or an old hand? <laughs> Sorry, this I forgot to take it down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go ahead, Dan Barclay. Dan Barclay, 47501, Highway 58. And first of all, I hope everybody understands and realizes that this council inherited, not created a financial crisis, um, not of their own making, all seven council members and now the pro tem city administrator and, and, and uh, finance director inherited a mess created by previous administrations and council, we have an audit 139 days overdue, past due, because of poor communication between former staff and the auditors. We have a horribly crafted public safety fee ordinance that 11 months, and we're 11 months into the, into the fiscal year and 45 days before the beginning of the next fiscal year, have yet to have a budget committee meeting. We haven't had a, a bona fide fire chief that was qualified to respond to a fire or medical emergency in almost seven years okay this council didn't create it they inherited it and they you know the job comes as is but my question is what you know this 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 public safety fee the budget committee approved it council adopted it with a heavy reliance on revenues that were over that were that were over estimated collections that were underestimated and here we are 11 months into the year and we've collected a whopping 30 percent of a public safety fee that was horribly crafted and basically un unenforceable so my question is we're going to get the audit what after we just we adopt the next budget. So the document that provides the strengths and weaknesses from the previous budget is not going to be available to these budget committee meetings that have committee that have yet to have a meeting because the first one got canceled because it was illegal, was improperly noticed. The second one was canceled. So the next the, the first budget committee committee meeting is the 24th of May, you know within 30 days of adopting a budget i don't envy anybody on council the budget it's not the first time that council has, has endured um the departure of the city administrator the finance director and the mayor in a six month period of time i feel your pain i've been there done that and you can ask jerry it's not it makes the job more difficult more complicated but it's not impossible I'm just wondering what the plan is because there is a crisis here and what what are we doing to to undo a decade old history of overspending and coming up short 
on the budget because we don't know how to reduce costs or we don't know how to reduce costs enough or you know let's just collect more from the citizens because we don't want to reduce anything or change anything we just want to collect more so i'm just kind of curious what is the priority what is the plan and i do apologize to this council because none of you created it you have been cleaning up somebody else's crap somebody else's mess from the moment you swore an oath of office and i and i feel for you trust me i do other than that on a positive note because it's raining enough outside it doesn't need to be raining in the meeting on a positive note james clevenger you look pretty dapper this evening that's all i had I this is Sissy Ketchen. Go ahead. 48300 Meadow Way. It must be said that it is absolutely a catastrophic blow to our children if it's true that the high school library is closing. And I do not see how we can prepare our children for university and technical trades without an adequate library resource. This is a devastating blow to a community that already only has their children in school four days a week. And it must be said, I wanna go on record. It is a devastating blow to the culture and community of Oak Ridge and it should not be tolerated. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor can I put my citizen hat on for a second? Absolutely. Uh, Kevin Martin, 47713 Commercial Street. And being the school board chair, I have not heard anything about the library, the high school library closing. So I, I as well, am going to check. And uh, Sissy Cutchin, if you would like to come to one of our school board meetings and, and relay that to the school as well, uh, I will find out what's going on because I hadn't heard that either and that upsets me. So uh, we will- Nothing I could say would have any gravitas, but it's for the parents to rally. We must rally around these children and their education. Our numbers are the lowest in Oregon for educating our children. We have to stand by our kids and get them prepared for life. Thank you, Kevin. I will try and do that. And that's all I had, Mayor, as a citizen. I'll just look into that because I, I, I want to see, because we have, I haven't heard anything about it. So we'll get to the bottom of it. Thank you. Um, I, I did want to say one thing that just for the record, the city of Oak Ridge does not control the Oak Ridge School Library. So I do implore any citizens that would like to get involved in that, please attend the school board meetings. That is the place to raise your concerns um, at that board. Um, second, um, Dan Barclay, I appreciate your sentiments and it's a very long question. So um, I will try to gather my thoughts together and say something in public comment at the next meeting. And if any other counselors would like to say anything, I encourage you to do so as well. Are there any more public comments? Any more staff? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Counselor Slido. Can I put my citizen hat on? No, um, you are an elected official. Okay. I just wanted to let Kevin know I as a counselor, I forwarded the email that I received as my minutes from the library board. So I just sent it to you and that's where it says it in there. So I will check tomorrow too in person to see what's going on. Thank you. All right, if there isn't any other public comments, I am going to adjourn the meeting at eight four. Oh, excuse me. Um, we did have an originally an executive session scan, can, scheduled and we are canceling that tonight. Um, our attorney, we just don't have enough information for the meeting tonight. So um, that executive session will be rescheduled. As for anything else, looks like we're done and adjourning the meeting at 8.41 PM. Thank you guys. Thank Have you. a good night, everyone. Thank you, Chief. Good night.